Hello everyone, it's TIJ, welcome to a brand new video in the first in a series of Football Manager 2018 experiments on the game Football Manager 2018. And we start with a one that's not necessarily close to my heart, but one I'm very interested in. It's Swansea City. Now, Swansea City last night sacked their manager, Paul Clement. And if you are a new viewer of the channel, hello, subscribe for daily FM18 content, retro games, and also a bit of this, FM18 experiments. But Swansea sacked their manager, Paul Clement, last night, of course. And there are rumours in the press that they want Louis van Gaal to replace him. Now, Louis van Gaal is an interesting one. Would he get to Swansea with his history? I mean, he's been to Barcelona. He's been to Ajax. He's been to AZ. He's been to Holland. He's been to Manchester United, obviously, most recently. Would he go to Swansea? I'm not quite sure about that. But this experiment's going to see how he would get on if he was the manager of Swansea. Of course, he's completely, you know, ad adapt to do it because he's got brilliant ad adaptability stats and brilliant tactical knowledge. And during his time at Manchester City, and Master Manchester United, not Manchester City, um, he played some very interesting football, long ball football. And what were the fans shouting in the stands, Louis? Louis van Gaal's army! <laughs> Louis van Gaal's army! Yeah, it was probably his best time at Man United, wasn't it? Louis van Gaal's army. That's fantastic stuff. But of course, in his time at Manchester United, they won the FA Cup. But previously, of course, um, he's won the he's won the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich. He's won the La Liga with Barcelona. He's won, he's, he's won leagues all around the all around the world. Now, of course, he's not really looking to do that with Swansea. What he's looking to do with Swansea is keep them up. And he's only got a two-year contract, but he's on 1.8 million a year, which is quite nice to see. Um, we're going to just skip really for a few years to see how Louis van Gaal does at Swansea, how he will cope at a lower league team in the Premier League. I don't really think he's ever played with a lower league, uh, not a lower league team, but necessarily a mid-table team in a league. Probably a bot from AZ, who aren't too brilliant. Um, but at the same time, they're not relegation candidates. So it's going to be a really a first for Louis van Gaal. Um, apparently, a long-term plan would not prefer not to be a manager in the Premier League. That's interesting. So will he go fairly soon? And of course, you've got the World Cup in the summer. Will he go to Holland, perhaps? Will he go back to Holland or will he retire after this season? Anyway, Swansea need a short-term fix, of course, after sacking of um, a mass of managers. They've had six managers in the last three years. They've had Gary Monk, Bob Bradley, Guidlin, obviously, um, Clement. Who else have they had? No. They've had, oh God, who have they had? But they've had a lot of managers. They've obviously had that um, Alan, whatever his name is, Alan Dudar, Alan. Alan, no, it's not Steve. Alan, uh, where is he? He's in the staff somewhere. Alan, Alan Curtis. There you go. Alan Curtis been the caretaker manager twice, so there you go. But Louis van Gaal, best luck to him. Let's see how he gets on this season. Right, so we've stopped. We've got to boxing down 2017. It doesn't look like he's been sacked. I've just got to this screen. Nothing's happened at the moment. The quiet from the quite humorous thing about Rogers going to Stoke. Anyway, let's have a look at Swansea. So, is he still manager at Swansea? They're 14th in the Premier League. Yes, and Van Gaal is still the manager. That's brilliant to see. So, they're 14th in the Premier League. Um, so, let's have a look at how they are getting on. So, they played 19 games, won 6, lost, uh, drawn 2, and lost 11. They've lost a lot of games, but, they, I mean, they've won quite a few as well, which is quite nice. Uh, top goal scorer, Tammy Abraham. That's good to see. Uh, Renato Sanchez, most assists, and most players of the match, um, Lucas Fabianski. Now, I'll put a transfer, not a transfer ban, um, but sort of a... Uh, restricting their budgets for August because it kind of ma ma matches real life then in that you know he hasn't got the budget to buy anyone and he kind of comes into the January but what tactic is he playing he's playing um, a 4-2-3-1 interesting just the one striker um, with Abraham and he seems to be the top goal scorer Bonnie scored five as well which is really nice to see because of course this season in real life the strikers just aren't scoring I think they've had 10 shots on target so far this year that's quite appalling but um, also Fulton IU Messer, Ki Sung Young, Close and, and Carroll all contributing with the goals. So it's, it's good to see a good uh, a width of goals, if that makes sense. Uh, a lot of players getting assists as well. So they're 14th in the Premier League. Um, playing quite well in 14th. And they played 19 games, as I said before. Won 6, drawn 2, and lost 11. What's it like in terms of goals scored and that sort of thing? We go on to the schedule then. Um, so I cited the season, if we look. Not so well, actually. They lost 3 0 to newly promoted. Uh, Newcastle and they lost to Everton 2-1 that's a that brings alarm bells but a big result against Liverpool beating them 2-1 that's brilliant um, and they did get to the Carabao Cup fourth round and then Van Gaal lost against his former team United which is a little bit embarrassing I can only imagine um, but they had a bad run of form they didn't win um, between Huddersfield and against Stoke so he didn't win for nearly two months so I'm sure his job probably come up with a little bit of pressure um, but it seems they can win against the big teams he's beat Arsenal 2-1 um, and he's beat Manchester City 2-3-2 and actually, he was down to 10 men by the end of the game. So that's quite impressive. And at the moment, he seems to be on a decent run of form. Hasn't lost in two. And that's the first time he hasn't lost in two um, since, actually, this nice little run of form of four uh, unbeaten against Brighton, Southampton, Liverpool and Huddersfield. So that's an interesting way to start. A good start for Van Gaal. Certainly not under pressure. 
Um, and yeah, an interesting start. 14th in the Premier League. They are quite close to relegation, but at the same uh, same token, they are safe at the moment. So we're going to skip to the end of the season, see who he brings in, and see can they escape the drop. The next stop is the night before the big game. The night before... Well, it's not the night, but oh well. The week of the last game of the Premier League season. Now, this is the closest relegation fight I have ever seen. Got Palace on 37, Leicester on 37, and then Swansea, Watford, Huddersfield, Everton, and Burnley all on 39. That's never happened. Stoke and Brighton are down. Shame. Uh, but, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, Swansea, Van Gaal's still there. They can either finish as high as 12th or as low as 18th. And who have they got on the last day? They've got Bournemouth. Hmm. Could win that. But let's have a look what they've done in terms of transfers before we move on a little bit. They've bought a lot of players in, actually, and they've sold quite a few as well. Jay Fulton's gone to Aberdeen. Angle Rangel's gone. Uh, Gore, Fur, Van der Hoom. So, actually, a few of the Deadwood players have gone. So, they've bought in Joris van Overeem, a Dutch player from AZ, one of uh, Van Gaal's first clubs, of course. And uh, he cost them 5.75 million, played 11 games, and has scored two goals so far. It's a decent signing then. And then a young player, Callum Stiles from uh, Berry, hasn't played yet, but looks like a, a future player, perhaps. Uh, same I presume goes for Eric Hester. I don't actually know. He's only t he's 22 um, and worth 600k, actually. He's out for six to nine months, so, oh dear. Not a great one. But he has played 10 games, seems to have a decent start at the Swans. Uh, Ismail Tajuri, he's 20, no, 24, sorry, he's from Libya. Um, and from Austria Venn. Uh, seven games he's played, not set the world alight at the same time. And then Nikolai Boylson um, come from um, Copenhagen, scored, uh, played 12 games and had one assist. Uh, and finally, Bart Newcoop, I believe that is. He's played nine, uh, eight games on a right back position, of course, replacing Angel Rangel. So let's have a look at the tactics. So uh, a few of the players are in. So you've got Van Oenreem who's playing, um, Boylison also playing. Um, anybody who's been put out of the squad, Wayne Routless has been transfer requested, uh, Nathan Dyer as well, Bonnie's out of the team, that's a bit of a surprise, but he has played um, a few, definitely a few games this season, definitely, um, but let's see how they get on in the final game, will they get relegated, in which Van Gaal will probably get sacked, or will they finish as high as 12th? So they won their final game, did Swansea, to stay up in the Premier League against Bournemouth. What a fantastic game that was then. They have stayed up with a magic points total of 40, and Crystal Palace have gone down. I pretty much ran through um, the players that they've signed, but since um, we left them, we left them against um, when they last played against Bournemouth, and they actually went on a decent run. No, they didn't actually. They beat Newcastle and Brighton, which is good to see, but after that, they went a bit of, through a bit of a sticky patch. Um, but been, the form's been a bit mixed all season, but if you look sort of this period, uh, Chelsea, Tottenham, Palace, Arsenal, City. To be fair, it's a tough run of games. But they went from sort of Stoke to Watford, um, not winning the game. So that would be in a bit of an awkward period. And probably one of them that pushed them into the relegation battle. But at the end, they got a draw against Bournemouth, which means that they get their survival. So if we look in terms of competitions then this season, how do they get on in the Cups? They got to the third round of the FA Cup and got knocked out by Brentford. Uh, their top goal scorer was Tammy Abraham in the league. Uh, on loan from Chelsea. be interesting to see whether they loan him out again or, or whether... Um, Van Gaal buys his own replacement. But Van Gaal, um, happy in the job, satisfied with life at the moment um, at Swansea. He's kept them up. He's proved he's decent at the club. Um, and he seems to have done decently. I don't really even think there's more, much more to report on in that first season. Richard Renato Sanchez has done well as well on loan from Bayern. It'll be interesting to see who he brings in in replacement for those two. Because those two have been really the biggest players this year. Um, and it'd be interesting to see who they bring in as replacement. So, average rating-wise, uh, Nathan Dyer actually been saying that he's only played three games. But it looks like we'll see the likes of uh, Dyer going over the summer. Um, Ryan, Ryan Rail. It's actually Key Sung Young has already been sold on his end of the contract. Um, and there's a, foot and a few of players who might well go the end of the season. So, it looks like uh, Van Gaal will have a clear out. Will he bring his own Dutch talent in? It'd be interesting to see. But we're going to skip through a full season or when Van Gaal gets sacked. So, if you see a different date to the end of uh, May 2019 in that corner... Next, you'll know he's been sacked. Well, he's gone. Hmm, that's a real shame. Before the 2018 to 19 seasons even started, he's gone to Spain. Obviously, it's the World Cup. And to be fair, in the long term plans, it says on here he didn't want to be a manager in the Premier League. So I can kind of understand him going to international duty. But let's have a look at his quick time at Swansea. It's a real shame. Obviously, Louis van Gaal has gone to Spain. Ah, <sighs> shame. But in his time, he won 13 games, drawn 8, and lost 22. Let's have a look if he did anything in the transfer window um, before anything. That he did, actually. He did a lot. Um, he bought Liam Kelly from Reading first off. Um, that's like a, like a really good sign. A really inspired sign, actually. Um, and, yeah, he could be really good. He, he's usually a midfield player, uh, attacking midfield as well. 
Um, they've also got Anthony Hartigan, who's a young player, so we're not going to delve into him too much. Christian Pedersen, Danish player, plays left back, a bit of backup on the left back position. Uh, Asuma Edrizi, um, he signed it as a right winger. And then Alan Polido as another striker. And then Dominic Splod. Uh, let's not try that. I'd say central midfielder. Any big players on, apart from Al Alfie Morrison, who's actually gone to Burnley? Uh, no, I don't think so. And so, in terms of uh, tactics, obviously the new manager's in there, but I would have guessed. Um, that he'd have played a 4-2-3-1 still. Um, he's brought Jordan Ayew in. Was Jordan Ayew... Yeah, Jordan... Oh. Oh, he went there on loan. No. No. Never mind. Ignore that. Um, Jordan Ayew has always been there. But he's actually transfer listed by the new manager. Um, and it looks like that the likes of Bonnie... Well, actually, Routledge and Dyer haven't gone yet. But that's really, really interesting to see. So, unfortunately, that's the end of the Louis van Gaal experiment. I I I'd have loved to see... How far he would have gone. But he's kept them up this year. So that's a metaphor for you I suppose. For the for the Premier League in terms of how we'll do. But anyway. That's been it for this experiment. Really unfortunate. Let me know who you think will be Swansea's net man at next manager. Louis van Gaal would be fantastic. But unfortunately he's left after a year and gone to Spain. Will he do that in real life? I'll never know. But anyway. I've been TIJ. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.